obstruction function at table disease is you get of the lungs. So your lungs fill your chest and sit on either side of your heart. They are made up of areas called lobes, and your right lung has three lobes, and your left lung has two lobes. Your left lung is smaller than your right because it shares that side of the chest of your heart. Your windpipe, which is also known as your tachea, this carries air into the lungs and out again when you breathe out. Your windpipe divides into airways called bronchi. These bronchi then branch into smaller and smaller airways, and the smallest are too narrow to be seen with the naked eye. This is often called the bronchial tree. At the end of these airways are tiny sats called alveoli. This is where gas exchange happens. Under a microscope, the inside of your lungs look like a giant sponge. There are around 300 million air sats in your lungs, and if they were spread out, they would cover an area roughly the size of a tennis court. With regards also to your lungs, the pleura is a thin transparent covering called a membrane that surrounds your lungs and lines the inside of your rib cage. It has two layers, so the outside of the lungs can slide smoothly against the inside of the chest wall as you breathe. The space between the two layers is called the pleural space, and this normally contains a small amount of fluid. This fluid lubricates the two surfaces and lets your lungs and chest wall move and expand as you breathe in and out. So looking more closely at the right lung and the left lung. So as I said before, you have two lungs, one on each side of your chest, which is also called the thorax. So your thorax is the area of your body between your neck and your abdomen. The lung on your right side is divided into three lobes, the superior, the middle and the inferior. This is shorter than your left lung, but it is also wider than your left lung. Both of these lungs are covered with a protective covering called the pleural tissue. In comparison, the left lung has two lobes, the superior and the interior. Your left lung is smaller, as I said before, than the right, because your heart is where the middle lobe on your left lung would be. Your left lung has two parts that your right lung doesn't have. The cardiac notch, where your heart fits, and the lindula, an extension of the superior lobe. So what do the lungs look like? So healthy lungs are pinkish greyish in colour, you can see on the right hand side. Damaged lungs are gray, darker grey and can have black spots in them. These are triangular shaped and look like the ears of an elephant. A typical lung in a human adult lung weighs about 2.2 pounds and is a little longer than 9 inches when you're breathing normally and about 10.5 inches when your lungs are completely expanded. Let's have a look at some conditions of disorders of the lungs. You've got as asbestosis. So if you inhale asbestosis fibres, this can cause scars in your lungs and pleural tissue. You can have asthma, which involves airway tightening, making breathing difficult. You can have bronchiitis, which is inflamed bronchi, which causes you to cough up mucus and have trouble breathing. You can have bronchitis, which is the main characteristic involves coughing. And this can be either acute, acute bronchitis or chronic bron bronchitis. You have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which is a progressive breathing disorder that can't be reserved. You have COVID-19, as everyone is aware of, which can cause mild or severe respiratory illness. And as well as this, you can have cystic fibrosis, which causes sticky mucus to build up in your lungs and other organs. Influenza, also known as flu, which is caused by a virus, the influenza virus. You have lung, lung cancer, which can be developed from smoking cigarettes. Mesothelioma, which is a type of cancer which is main, mainly caused by breathing asbestos fibres. Pneumonia, which is caused by fluid in your lungs leading to hospitalisation. Pulmonary fibrosis, which is starting over your lungs, which causes breathing difficulty and is irreversible as there is no cure to it. Pulmonary nodules, these are growths in your lungs which are mainly benign, non-cancerous. A type of virus known as respiratory syncytial virus, RSV, which can happen in children and adults, and tuberculosis caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which affects your lungs but can also affect other body parts. So symptoms of lung disease involve shortness of breath, and the medical term for this is dyspnea, chest pain, cough, especially a chronic cough which is long lasting, or coughing up blood or mucus, fatigue, meaning you're extremely tired, wheezing, which is when you make the sound as if like a whistle is going through your chest, and swelling in your ankles and feet. There are various lung tests that can be undertaken, so you can listen for the sounds in your lungs, including those that indicate a problem, including crackles, also called rails, wheezing, and stridio, which is a high-pitched noise. You can count the number of breaths you take, such as your respirations, hear a change in your voice while people while they're listening to your lungs. You can use a device called a pulse, pulse oximeter to measure the oxygen levels in your blood. 
So you can have imaging tests to show your provider what your lungs look like. These are chest X-ray, computed top tomography CT scan, ultrasound, MRI scan, also known as magnetic resonance imaging. Or you can have pulmonary function tests, which are diffusion testing, body plethysmography, plethysmography, diffusion testing, it's a nitric oxide test, lung volume test, metacholine inhalation test, a six minute walk test, and spirometry. Treatment of the lungs involves steroids to reduce inflammation, which is swelling in the airways, antibiotics to take infections, bronchodilators to open up airways, which come in long acting and short acting versions, mucolytics to make mucus thinner so it's easier to cough up and out, oxygen therapy to improve your oxygen levels, chemotherapy and or radiation to treat cancers, and vaccines to help prevent infections. So let's have a look at something else related to the lungs. Acid-based balance disorders. So this is vital for normal body functions because disruption of this equilibrium can lead to severe complications such as arrhythmias and seizures. Therefore, this balance is tightly regulated. Blood has the ability to be resistant to small changes in pH, which are a characteristic which is known as buffering. This is due to basal levels of bicarbonate and hydrogen ions in blood. The chemical reaction is given by the henderson hasselbalch equation. This reaction can be used to control your pH, for example, in metabolically active tissues, there's an increase in hydrogen ions. These can react with biocarbonate in the red blood cells to form carbon dioxide, which can then be exhaled by the lungs. The compensatory systems of the blood rely on this equation. So, looking at the henderson hasselbalch equation, this relates the pH to the ratio between the concentration of bicarbonate and the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. This shows that a ratio between bicarbonate, bicarbonate production and partial pressure of carbon dioxide drive the pH levels of the blood. By increasing bicarbonate levels, the pH will rise and turn more alkaline. By increasing a partial pressure of carbon dioxide, the pH of the blood will fall and turn acidic. The usual range of blood pH is from 7.35 7.45. When pH levels drop below 7.35, it is said to be acidotic, and when it is above 7.45, it is said to be alkalotic. When blood pH deviates from the normal range, there are two body systems which are activated to store equilibrium. The respiratory system alters the respiratory rate to change the concentration of carbon dioxide in the blood, whilst the urinary system changes the reabsorption of production of biocarbonate or hydrogen ions. This is known as compensation. So looking at acidosis alkalosis, this is a complex regulatory mechanism for changing the respiratory rate. Chemoreceptors detect the levels of certain molecules in the blood and alter the respiratory rate accordingly. Peripheral chemoreceptors in the carotid sinus and aortic arch signal to the brainstem via cranial nerves to alter the respiratory rate. Central chemoreceptors function via a different method. When there's a rise in carbon dioxide in the blood, it can diffuse into the cerebrospinal fluid as it is a small molecule. An enzyme called carbonic anhydrase can then turn the carbon dioxide in water into bicarbonate and hydrogen ions. Hydrogen ions are then sensed by chemical chemoreceptors which alter the respiratory rate directly. Respiratory acidosis with an increase of carbon dioxide in the blood, the cause of which is due to a disordered respiratory system. Common causes include respiratory depression by opiates, disorders of respiratory muscles such as polio, and airway obstruction such as sleep apnea. This overwhelms the buffering system and causes a drop in pH. Therefore, the kidneys have to excrete more hydrogen ions in addition to increasing by carbon reabsorption. Respiratory alkalosis is associated with hypoventilation, which can occur due to hypoxema, for example, from high altitudes or a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in the lungs. The compensatory methods for respiratory alkalosis is that it is opposite of respiratory acidosis. Due to high levels of bicarbonate, hydrogen ions are reabsorbed to attempt to bring the pH down by decreasing hydrogen excretion and decreasing bicarbonate reabsorption production. So the next, so the next sessions will basically be on cancer genetics, cancer types, etc, diagnosis, treatment. So that'll be the next two weeks, hopefully. And after that, there'll be a lot more exciting topics coming. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Please remember to like, share and subscribe and thank you very much.